Welcome back everybody to another exciting Lord Duckman production. I'm your host, the Lord Duckman himself. <laughs> but we're back with this 1972 square bag, which as you remember, we were working on the engine. I covered it up with uh, some tarps and got everything plugged up because I figured it might have rained. And it not only rained, but it rained a day in advance of the forecast and it poured the next day. And I'm glad I got everything covered up when I did. Airplane! And, uh, well, needless to say, everything is under here. It should be nice and dry. All well sealed up. I think I did a pretty good job on that. Yeah, I ran over my own tarp. Duck man, don't run over your tarp. <laughs> anyway, since I posted up the last video, I've had a lot of Ford and Chevy guys, and the reason why I call them that is because they're trying to tell me how to do things the wrong way. It's always some way that they want to do something. You know, there's reasons why I did things the way I did. Even for your Volkswagen guys that are watching this, I did things the way I did it, and there's always a reason. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to stick with it. I mean, this clearly is my project, this clearly is my video, and this is the way I'm going to do it. If you don't like it, well, keep your opinion to yourself. <laughs> anyway, I'm enjoying this thing. We're going to uh, adjust the valves on this thing. We're going to torque down the heads properly. We're going to do the heads first, of course, before we do the valves, but I do have to pop the valve covers off. So we're going to jump into that stuff right now. But before we get any further, let's go ahead and licky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle bell to get updates every time I upload a video. And I check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. If you'd like to see more of what I do, I have other YouTube channels, and you'll find them up on my website, DuckShit.net. If you'd like to email me also, DuckManCycles at DuckShit.net. Send me something if you'd like. Uh, otherwise, I guess that's it for now, so let's roll that intro. <laughs> two days of rain I'm back here to finish working on this engine now after the last video I went and I tore down everything you notice it's missing all the cooling tins on the top of the engine and I actually pulled off the exhaust also it was uh, dark when I did it I was trying to get a little head start on well pretty much the what I'm going to be doing in this video and I packed up the car because I knew it was gonna rain I really didn't want to do that but well I was extra careful and I made sure nothing in there is gonna get scratched so it's all good to go but we're down here, we're gonna get these uh, valve covers pulled off for starters, we're gonna pull out the rockers, then we're gonna torque down the heads on both sides, put the rockers back on, torque down the rockers, adjust the valves, then we can start putting our exhaust back on, start putting our tins back on, and at that point, well, pretty much the engine's ready to go back into the car after that. So that's what we're doing today, and well, let's go ahead and get a head start. Now we got a little magic spring thing here that's been laying on top of this engine. I don't know what it came from, there's also a little uh, S-hook that I don't know what it came from either. So we're going to keep those in a safe place because, well, they might turn up as missing in some other location. Otherwise, that's previous mechanic stuff. Yeah, it's always something. All right, now as good a time as any to pull off this valve cover. There it is. Now spotlessly clean on the inside. Very nice. This was uh, very, very likely a recent rebuild. Out here. Should be a washer on each one. The rocker assembly should pull out of there if it feels like it. Come on now. Pull out of there. Why aren't you letting go? There it is. Alright. Push rods are in there. I don't see anything goofy or broken. Everything looks pretty good. Even the valve lash when I just pushed on these things didn't look too bad. All right, here's our cylinder head studs. We got four across here, four across there. The ones here on the top, typically they rust. So when you go to turn them, the whole stud will turn when you turn the nut on it. So it's just it's rusted solid. But these are the things we got to torque. This is number one, and then we go two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And these have to be tightened to, looking at the size of the studs, these are going to be 23 foot-pounds because these are the big studs. Typically the studs on these things are smaller. Looking at the case, and it does not look like it has any case savers. Another good reason why we saved it from overheating, because those studs will pull out of these cases, especially these bigger, thicker, heavier studs, because they don't expand the same way that the smaller studs do. These are better for race engines. 
when you need to lock that you know extra compression and everything together but on these smaller stock engines which this appears to be I don't know it may not be looking at the stampings on the inside of the head and I don't see anything that uh, indicates that it's a Volkswagen head valve or the um, intakes don't look particularly large or anything looks like the valves are nice and straight so we don't see anything that's sinking on this side this looks good to me all I'm gonna do here is uh, torque down the heads reset the valves and close this thing up so All here right, we go. Yes, I do do rehearsals sometimes. <laughs> he said do do. But in this case, I went and I tightened down bolt number one and I got three quarter of a turn on it. So these things are indeed loose. So we're probably gonna get the same result up here too. Oh, no, that one's actually tight. There we go. Come on down here. Yeah, they're loose, guys. Do not want to run these things loose because you will blow a hole in the head and no that wasn't the torque wrench ting and that was the uh, the bolt breaking free there it is all right one two three four so five is over here is that one tight no just the bolt breaking free all right Again, bolt breaking free, that was not the torque wrench. There it is. And again, bolt breaking free. Somebody in one of my past videos where I torqued down the heads on an engine that was new to me, used engine, but new to me, they said, well, just loosen all the bolts and retighten them. Like, yeah, let's warp the head too while we're at it, right? That one's tight. That's the only tight one here. How about it? Just break it free just a little bit. Yeah, it's still tight. Okay. We're not going to play with that at all. All right. Our valves are ready to go back together. We got our little valve shims under here. Somebody set up rocker geometry before I was in here. That's good. I'm just going to look at it, make sure it's right. It's probably good. Because the builder of this engine and he who built the car were not the same people. But here we go. All right, we have... Couple of washers, a couple of nuts, and a set of rockers. The rockers are gonna go on just like so. Make sure that they pick up all of our push rods. So I put them in before mist, torqued everything down, went to adjust the valves, and discover one of the push rods is bloop out of the cup, and it's <laughs> all stupid. Anyway, live and learn, right guys? And these bolts here, or nuts I should say, need to be tightened down to 18 foot-pounds, so I'll need to recalibrate that wrench. <clears throat> It'll also need a different size socket. I just happen to have right here, it's a 13. You know what I should have done? I should have. You should, Duckman, you should. Just spin them. There you go. Now I don't have to dick around with the ratchet doing this stupid shit. All right, now it's calibrated currently to 25, so I'm gonna back it off five. Let's see. Oop, that's too forward. We wanna go one, two, three, four, five. So now we're at 18. Here, one of the chickens escaped. Come on, 18. There it is. A couple weeks ago, you guys watched me adjust the valves. I don't know if I'll demonstrate that again here. But I'll at least let you guys get a good look to see if the valves are out of adjustment. Since I just took everything apart, of course, and everything's been retorqued, I'm not going to be the least bit surprised if it needs to be redone. It's, the gaps are all wrong on it. But anyway, I got a 12 millimeter wrench, a half inch, and a 13 millimeter. And you say, well, why'd you grab so many sizes? It's just one size nut. Yeah, but that one size, people screw it up. 13 is what it typically should be. And this one, that appears it is. It's a loose 13, but it's a 13. 12 doesn't fit. And a half inch is actually about 12.7 millimeters. And you know what? That fit better than the 13 did. So we're going to use a half inch wrench on there. 
because I'm much less likely to round out the nuts. So, yeah, that's thinking ahead, duck man. All right, you know what? These, uh, this valve has very little lash. This has none. This one has very, very little, and this one, of course, is open. This is on the exhaust stroke. So, <laughs> I have to turn it around, make sure we're pointed towards cylinder number one. So we'll get that advanced, and we'll take care of it. I'm not gonna do the old, the, uh, the new way where they tell you to put the thing in one position and then run around it and tighten a bunch of valves and then one other position and run around it and tighten the rest of them. No, we're not doing that shit. We do it the old fashioned way. Point the top dead cylinder, point the top dead center on cylinder number one, point the top dead cylinder on cylinder number two, and then we'll do three and four. I don't like all the confusion and the other thing. I don't like thinking about that. I just like doing it the way that I know how to do it, that I can follow the instruction manual. That's what we're doing today. All right, well, we're in good shape here. Let's get my feeler gauge out. And we'll pick out the appropriate size and get these things gapped. It's coming apart. My tool's falling apart. Oh, man. All right, here we go. All right, I advanced it around to cylinder number one, and it turned out my um, timing was actually only slightly off. I barely had to turn it at all. <laughs> and we were really close. Anyway, we're at top dead center, and I'm on the intake valve here, and I can't get a six thousandths feeler gauge in there. And I can't get a six thousandths feeler gauge in there, and that is the spec. Now, Volkswagen's older spec was uh, four thousandths. Let's see if that fits. Nope, so it wasn't even set to the older. And that same over here on the, uh, the intake side, too. So, yeah, this is completely out of spec. These are way too tight. And that could have been a result of overheating this engine, because when you overheat things, valves tend to begin to sink. Now these have only sunk if they have thousandths of an inch, so there's truly no damage, not yet anyway. But in time, that would have become a bigger problem. All right, we got our half-inch wrench here, as we talked about before, which is a better fit than anything. And this screwdriver is a terrible fit. Where did that one even come from? This is the one I wanted to use. <laughs> And my brother, who may be watching, prefers to use the, uh, the actual valve adjustment tool, which allows you to turn two, two things at the same time, the, both the wrench and the screwdriver. Let's see how close we are here, and I think I got it. Oh, wow. I nailed it on the first try. Okay. Same over here. We need to open that one up just a little bit. That wasn't bad for a guess, huh? Just going by feel, you can tell I got a little bit of experience here, huh? Open that up just a little bit. Tighten them down. Let's see how we're doing here. Yep, perfect. Okay. Need to do the same thing over here on this one, so we're going to advance the cylinder number two, or actually go backwards because that's the firing order, and here's one, four, three, two, so if I advance, I'd have to jump over to cylinder four, so I actually gotta turn it over backwards. And then we'll hit this one, but otherwise, this is good. I'm gonna adjust that, put the cover back on, then we'll go to the other side and make sure everything's good over there, too. All right, when properly adjusted, they should sound like that. <laughs> that's it, now they actually have noise, whereas before they were so damn tight, I couldn't do anything with them. Well, they're good now. So quickly here, I just wanted to touch on this one, but the exhaust valve here was so tight that it was holding the exhaust valve open. There was no play in it at all at top dead center. So this thing was definitely not running correctly and it would have fried that exhaust valve in time, but now it's got that little bit of um, six thousandths of play and using that feeler, yep, I can feel just a little resistance right there. So we're good. All right, this cover's ready to go back on. Oh, duck man, duck man, come on duck man. <laughs> there it is. Okay, jumping over to the other side. Right. Here. I forgot to Vockel, vockel. I know I wanted to see how loose the valves were on it before I got started, but anyway, I'm Beyond just still that calibrated <laughs> from the four. So again, starting on cylinder number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, right here, let's see how loose they are. First, we're gonna hear the bolt break free, probably. Yep, break free. 
go. That's one. Two. That one came up tight right away. Nope, never mind. It was just a breaking free. It is. Yep, that's the one. Okay, here. Okay. That's such an awful crunching sound. <laughs> right here. There it is. Officially torqued down on this side. This one wasn't as loose as the other one, which surprised me. I figured this head would have been the hotter of the two because it's got the oil cooler above it. So some of the air that comes over here is uh, not being directed over the cylinder head. So uh, it's a different path of air. At least it should be anyway. But anyway, Volkswagen. Volkswagen. All right. Let's see. Put our rocker assembly. Back on. We've got our spacers on here, good. Push our push rods in, and these, by the way, are aluminum. If they were chromoly for some reason, then we would set a different valve lash because the aluminum ones do expand more than the chromoly ones do. Okay, make sure our push rod to go up into the Cups on the rockers. That's all of them. Very nice. Put our Wild Bill washers back on here. Snug. That's got to go quite a bit more. There it is. All right. We already got this calibrated as before. I want to let go. Let go. foot pounds for the rocker bolts. Should have tightened that one up a little more too, but anyway. Alright, come on 18. Jump over to the other one real quick. This is flat. There it goes. 18? And one more. 18. Come on. There it is. And how do those valves feel? They're all super tight. Super tight. Absolutely no motion in them whatsoever. Well, that one, you know what? It's budging. Those are tight, tight. All right, we're going to roll around the uh, crank. So we have top dead, top dead center on cylinder number three. So that's next because we have one, two, three, and then finally four. Anyway, we'll get the valve set on this side, and it should be good to go. But they are, like I said, way too tight. All right, All right let's keep going. As I said, way too tight. Absolutely no motion on this one. And that one, I can feel it and I can hear it, but I don't see any motion. So, yeah, way too tight. Let's try our half inch again, because that was the one that fit perfectly before. That, I swear, that is just a perfect fit on that bolt. That is not a 13 millimeter nut. I don't care what anybody says. That is not a 13 millimeter nut. Back this off just a little bit. Mm 
feel awkward over here because I don't have a lot of space for me to move. Oh, first try again. Nice. <laughs> Probably gonna go a little more. Yeah. Yep, perfect. All right. Cylinder so number four is our last one. And then we can put this all back together, start working on our exhaust, and putting the tins back on. Yay! Alright, just for laughs, I figured I'd show you the last one just because. Can't get that in there. Can't get that in there. They're so damn tight. I mean, they are tight. This one is also holding the exhaust valve open. This one seems to be holding the intake open as well. It was playing it before, but at top dead center, we have none. So, let's loosen it up. Ah one of those things you be careful guys because if you slip and you punch these valve adjusters you'll split your hand wide open and if you wonder where that scar came from that's what it was it was on a Honda CR F150 I believe it was back in 1994 might have been summer of 95 but it was 94. Summer of 94, I think, is when I did it. It was bad. It was bad. Every time I would move, it would open up. I probably should have had stitches put in it. Anyway. Okay, let's see what we got here. That one could... Yeah, I could tighten that one up just a little bit. I made it just a little too loose. In ballpark, though. I mean, I'm pretty close. Now it's too tight. <laughs> perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right. And then the last one. Ow. Pinched my finger in between the uh, wrench. The valve adjuster. Right, here we go. A little bit looser. It's almost there. A little bit looser. Barely any, but a little bit. Here we go. Perfect. All right. This side gets his valve cover back on. Ow. Boy, I get my fingers caught in everything today. All right, we're adjusted, good. Noisy truck goes by, and then we're gonna start putting the exhaust on here. Yay! I'm gonna put the J-tubes on first. You know, I probably should just stick the header in place because I don't know which J-tube goes on which side. It's not always the most intuitive because they do have a different shape. All right, these are our J-tubes. Why do they call them that? Well, because they look like the letter J. Or is it that way? Yeah, it's that way. <laughs> Duck man, you illiterate son of a bitch. Anyway, um, I believe they go on the engine like this. I think they, they curve outward slightly. I don't think I'm wrong. I mean, they could go in. This is the reason why I pulled out the header, because I'm going to stick the header on, and then we're going to come around the back side over here. And we're going to see these pipes make a lot of noise <laughs> and line up properly. Alright, so putting this on here. I'm going to leave these gaskets on here, by the way. They look like they're brand new. Alright, and we'll take one of these J-tubes, and I think this is the one for the right-hand side. I think I'm right. I'm pretty sure. Yep, that looks right. But, it needs to be cut too damn long. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to have to make an adjustment on that. Not a problem. We'll just put a pipe cutter on there. Again, this is why I run music in the background of my videos. We'll run a pipe cutter on it. We'll cut off about three quarter of an inch of this thing. So that shouldn't be any problem at all. We'll probably do the same thing on the other side, but we'll check that right now just to be sure. But I think we're going to be okay. Here's the J-tube inserted. And no, I had the wrong one on the uh, right hand side. I noticed when I went to put the one on the opposite side, it was way too short. And I realized, you know, these things are offset. The heads are not straight. See, this head is closer to the rear of the car. This head is closer to the front of the car. So the longer tube does belong on that side. So I'm glad I didn't start cutting it before I checked everything out. Anyway, that's good to go. But one thing we need to do before we bolt anything down is we need to put the donuts on here. There's a little seal that goes between these two pipes. It's a little round donut thing and, and kind of a, um, it's like a washer that's been warped on kind of a 45 degree angle. And we'll, we'll throw them on there. We'll show what they look like. I got to go uh, deal with an unruly rooster who's trying to come up in the front yard. Little troublemaker. Go cart's going out to uh, David's tonight. Ranchero 302 Me. We're going to tear that thing up. That'll be probably part of Saturday's video. Let's see what's going on. I just saw them peeking around. Oh, I see you. Where's your brother? There he is. You troublemaker. Why are you over here screaming, huh? Why? Why are you making so much trouble? Why are you stressing your daddy out? Ooh, you were going to pick a fight with me. That's a first, huh? My little boy's growing up. Yeah. Usually Icebox is a good boy. There's Biddy screaming because he sees me. There's Cheeky in her house. Her house is open. She can get out, but she's just, she's hanging out. And I don't know where Mama is. Mama was digging holes over here before. Oh, there she is. I looked right past her. You were hiding in the brush. You see, she's wearing her uh, chicken scratch guard because the roosters are a little too rough on her. Been ripping her feathers out, so... We put that on her, and we put one on Frosty also. You know, that's one of those Amazon things where the idiot shipped me a package so late. I know she was missing one or two feathers from this douchebag, and I went and had that ordered for her, and then it was late. And it was over a week and a half late before I could hit the refund button on it. And then when I hit the refund button, I had to reorder it. So two weeks later, I finally got the part, and she was completely bald on her back. She was completely bald. I was going to hope to grab her and show you, but anyway, she ran in there. But he picked off all of her feathers and actually gashed her in the side. I don't know how she's not severely infected. She has a hole so deep in the side of her I can put my finger in it. But it's already scabbed itself over and it's healing, so I mean, there's no sign of infection, so just leave her be. But that poor girl, yeah, you are a douche. So I clipped his claws, and I try to keep them somewhat separated, but she does keep that thing on most of the time now. And there's the other two babies. That's Biddy's, that's Biddy, his son and daughter. And you can see the uh, little sexual dimorphism there. The big one is gonna be the rooster and he's, he's getting really big. And on the other hand, she is kinda on the small side. And I hope she stays small. Kinda small, cute, dainty. That's right, yeah, yep. Yeah, you know. Your brother, who's not with us anymore, Tezzy, he was the biggest rooster of the yard. Yeah. Yeah, he was even bigger than you, and that was your father. Yeah, your daddy was the biggest roo. You're not even as big as your daddy, no. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. Enough messing with these stupid birds. Here's Mama. Come here, Mama. Let everybody see the hole in your back. Let me see your feathers. Come here. Let me show what Biddy did to you. Yeah. Get you a look here. See, look what, look what he did to her. In this week that she's had these things on, she's actually beginning to fill in. That's good, but he made a mess out of her. Poor girl. I know, Mama. When you came to this house and you picked me, I swore to protect you. So I'm going to keep doing that. Yep. You're the one here that started all this chicken business. Your own grandson just tried to get you. I saw that. All right. Hey, you shut up, you idiot. All right, I'm going back to work. Where's Boomer? There's Boomer. Hi, Boomer. What are you doing, douchebag? And I see Cheeky escaped. Yeah, you ran out when I wasn't looking. <laughs> Be a good girl, okay? All right, getting back out to work here. There's the go Duck man, what's all this talk about donuts? Now, this is the donut I was telling you about. That little guy right there. This one is a, a neat, um, kind of like a, uh, what do they call that stuff? <laughs> Steel wool. Boy. I have trouble remembering really weird words sometimes that I don't use often. But yeah, it's just pretty much crushed steel wool. They crush it into the shape that it's supposed to be. And this is that washer I was telling you about. It's kind of on a 45 degree angle. You see, it's kind of kind of wobbly. 
these have to go on first and if you screw this up actually this one needs to go on first if you screw this up and put it on last well, then you got to take everything back apart to get to it that goes on there just like that and when you slide this into the other pipe all this gets clamped together and this is what provides your seal these things are never like super airtight they always manage to leak a little bit so don't be the least bit surprised if you do this kind of work and you put your hand over the exhaust tip and it, it you know out of it a little bit because it's just yeah they're always a little less than perfect it's just the way they are but you don't notice an exhaust leak while it's running it's only when you cap it off which you don't cap off an exhaust <laughs> anyway let's get the sucker put on here it's gonna go on just like that and then we'll put the clamp over it and again don't forget to put these on first leave these gaskets on here because they're actually in pretty good shape. Here we go. We'll pull our donut way up to the front. Here it is. That's where the seal lives. I got a little ahead of myself here and well, the exhaust is bolted on. Got brand new gaskets in the back. I thought I was going to leave them in there but the other ones that were in there look pretty ratty so just replaced them. There's our donuts up front here. These are going to get pushed in just like that. Then there's a clamp that goes all the way around that. And yes, the clamp opens up, it unbolts, and then I can close it down over. I don't have to get it over the pipe first. This did have to go in the pipe first. And this is one of those things that, again, I mentioned it earlier, but ask me how I know. <laughs> Nothing more frustrating than uh, putting a car together and then realizing you had parts left over and the engine's already mounted and you gotta get under the car and take this whole part to get to it again. All right, well, we're good up here. It looks like the next things you need to go back on is our engine tins. Once we get our tins mounted, we can start sticking on intake manifolds and carburetors. But I might wait to do that until the thing's back in the car, because it's a whole lot easier to push it under the rear apron here. Well, yeah, I might just uh, hold off on that. I guess we'll see. Uh, I could yank out the distributor, though. Well, that won't give me any more clearance, will it? No, it won't. So that can just stay, then. All right, well, we'll put our tins back on, and then we'll start getting this engine aligned because it looks like it's uh, about ready to start going back in. First, we've got to put on our front tin. It is this one. It goes on this way. Here's the uh, exit chute for the oil cooler. That's how we know that that side goes on the right. One underneath this transmission dipstick here. A little bit of a trouble. Something different than what I'm used to here. Come on now, get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Oh my god. It's a little bent. Just a little bit bent. I think that's how it's supposed to go though. Despite being a little bit. There it is. That's how it's supposed to go. Okay, this is our left side tin. We know it's the left side tin because it has the hump over it for the oil cooler. And just on the inside, if anybody's curious, when the air goes into this thing from the opening that's here, it passes through here, through the oil cooler, and then it's expected to go out through the rear chute, right here. So the air is separate from the uh, cylinders themselves, although in the top, they kind of do somewhat chair. Air can get, you know, it's not diverted by way of any veins. So yeah, I guess on this side, some of the air, um, despite the hot air coming off of the oil cooler not going directly onto the cylinders, get this out the way this side would technically run a little warmer because it is sharing where the air goes and comes from these tins are a little beat up they look nicely painted on the outside but underneath no they're pretty beat up now I know this went in first I can see where the bolt holes are. I don't know what I'm doing wrong and how I took this apart. Alright. Something's not happy. This may have not been installed properly to begin with. 
and me trying to mimic the way I had taken it off might be, yeah, it might have been wrong to begin with the whole time around. Of such a fight because when I took it off, all I went was bloop and it was off. Alright, it's seated properly. That's where it's supposed to be. And I can see all the screw holes line up. Alright, that's where it's gonna go then. And we have our right side tin. While I'm trying to speak over a jet-powered aircraft, this out the way here. This goes on. This. Before I button everything up on here, I'm going to clean this. It's just oily, greasy stains here. I can do better than that. I'm not going to leave it that way. I didn't see that before because, of course, I did a lot of this stuff uh, disassembly in the dark. There it goes. That's it. All right, those tins are in. And this one, despite coming out from under them before, is now going to uh, go on top because it seems to fit better. So I guess whoever put this together last time really wrestled to get it together because it was wrong. <laughs> yeah, look, everything just fits on here like it's supposed to. Yeah, all right, that's not quite aligned right, but yeah, it's 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 in. <laughs> just got to get the screw holes to line up, and then she's she's good to go. All right, well, good. Let me close that dipstick up so dirt doesn't get in there. Alright, I love when this happens. I got a little ahead of myself. I started to run in some of the screws. So these screws are in right there. There's one way up in there. I did the same thing on the other side. Tins are essentially mounted. There's another screw that goes up underneath here. And I think that about finishes the mounting of the tins. I did take one out the top of this, but I don't think it needed it. I think that was wrong. Incorrect. Nonetheless, there it is. Tins are just about ready to, to be completed. And then next uh, goes on the carburetors, but like I said, I think we might wait until I get it in the car to do that. It's a little hard to work through that hole though, especially on the left hand side where the oil cooler is, because it's hard to reach around that hump to get those bolts in. So, I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind and do otherwise. Meanwhile here, I'm going to pick up some things. I got a few tools to put away. I got too, too much out. There's just way too much in this car now because there's stuff in here that I don't need anymore. So I need to start putting some stuff away. While I'm doing it, I'm going to start thinking about what I want to do. Otherwise, this looks good, and, uh, well, we'll see what happens in the next step of this process. Otherwise, she's coming back together. Oh, I still need to finish putting these exhaust clamp back on here. I didn't do that yet. Hey, there it is. Boop. It'll be done before the engine goes in. Well, looky what we got right, here. Go. Hey. Wild Bill shows up in my tall grass. I didn't recognize the driveway, seeing how you've taken over your neighbor's driveway. Yeah, she's been kind enough to lend me some space. You know, my neighbors hate me because of all the noise I make, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, get your boombox out here and you'll be right. Yeah, well, it's nice when you take care of your neighbors and you fix their stuff when they need help. They take care of you, too. Right. Well, I just got through replacing a lot of things on this. Yeah, huh? The throw-out bearing was the big thing. That's when it broke down at that car show. Geez, that was a year ago. Yeah, not one a year ago. It yeah, it was a year six, ago. Six months ago. No, it was like last May. May, May. Wasn't it? No. Uh, I've never been in the spring. No. Yeah, this spring. No, well, the spring just started. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it's almost over at this point, but... <laughs> yeah, there was some... There no, was some... it was in the... Yeah, it wasn't hot out yet. It was getting there. It was last spring. It was a year oh, ago. Man. I got a video of it. We'll have to look it up. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it was about a year ago. I, I, can, I can see the disclaimer <laughs> coming out. Wild Bill was right. Well, if Wild Bill was right, then that means it was fall, and it wasn't, it wasn't it a year was ago. Fall. But, it was fall. In which case, it was still last year. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Last year was a, was a, was a summer year. But uh, as, as you can see, I'm doing some headlight well, and... Should have put on my sunglasses, clothes. man. Ooh. And I just got the uh, light kit in, so... I just got to replacing one of the more tedious things to do is heater cables. Running heater cables down a rusty dag on a little mm. 
pipe. It's not fun. Heater cables. Yeah, we need heat down here in the summer. Yeah, right, right. We deleted it from the uh, square. These, these things are on handwalls. Hey, nice headlights. Yeah. But uh, Your eyes have been gouged out. A 1968 <laughs> double cab. Uh-huh. Uh, it's made the European spec, so it had to have the special things on it that the American versions did. Most notable is on the rear. You don't have any backup lights. Yep. And you don't have the little holes. They were they were in the American version mm -hmm. of the tailgate there, so that when you laid the tailgate down, you could still you could drive it with the tailgate down, and still see the brake lights. In the turn yeah. How about that? Uh, uh, oh look! Every time I record the video, you know, as soon as I hit that record button, man. Every time. <laughs> Another reason I want to move to the woods. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah, I want you to go there too. Yeah. Have your own private get list. Get us more damn work than we can handle. Just about. <laughs> I mean, I already have too much. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what's left to do on this one is, of course, the headlights. I gotta uh -huh. install them and uh, wire in the uh, fog lights. Custom leaves. I'm putting, I'm putting yeah, this is all custom. <laughs> I'm putting in uh, some uh, engine compartment lights too. Cool. Like, so like the brake stand in that he's got his flipper switch and he's got nice LED lighting mm. but uh, yeah like I said test drove it uh, changed the speedometer from kilometers to uh -huh. miles an hour in fact it had zero 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 all the way across you changed it or you just replaced it replaced it okay I thought you actually did something mechanical and changed the phaser or something oh yeah right? it, it involved a sledgehammer yeah. oh well <laughs> <laughs> right now it's got eight miles on it. Eight miles? Yeah. It's brand new. Yeah, this thing is not even broke in. Just came yet. off the ship. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, time to encapsulate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll get this back to Scott hopefully cool. tomorrow afternoon. And, cool. Uh, it'll be out at the, uh, at the, uh, thing this thing weekend. Saturday. Yeah. The What's that called again? The Groovy Saturday. Groovy Saturday? Yeah. Hey, we picked, uh, Jeffrey picked up our, uh, bike and he yeah. today. Did he ride it? Nope. He's still in the box. <laughs> I don't want to see him ride it though. Yeah. All 400 pounds of him. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, they're, uh, they're going to do some pinstriping and stuff on it. I'm going to start advertising that thing pretty heavy here. <laughs> and it's going to be for a Ford charity here in town. And uh, uh -huh. No fender though this time. No. No stupid fender. No, no stupid fender. Stupid fender. Uh, well, it has fenders, but not both way ones. <laughs> Chinese ones. But, uh, yeah, this is a beautiful thing. It's, it's, it's uh, right now, yeah, zoom in on that speedometer, man. Look at that thing. Eight, eight miles on the thing, eight or nine miles. So he got a he got a rebuilt one. Uh, the old one's in the box over there. Yeah. All right, pull the dash out and put that in. Swap out all the wires. And this is a, a German. Yes. German one. Okay. Right. What was the Brazilian one you had? It was a different one, wasn't it? Uh, the one that had the goofy headlights. No, no, no. This. One this was the one that had yeah, the goofy yeah, headlights. Yeah. Okay. I had to go. I had to get the headlight frame replaced uh, in England. Were they Euro spec headlights or were they actual Brazilian yeah, ones? H4, okay. H4 Euros. Because uh, I remember they, they were just, they were goofy. They just didn't match anything else. Yeah, I know. I mean, they looked fine when you installed them, but they just didn't look like anything else. They were just well, the, actually, slightly different. <laughs> the, the, the innards on this thing, when you, mount the, when you mount the light on there, you can mm -hmm. see there's only one screw, and that's for, that's for the, yep, for the ring. And then the other, it clips in there, and then... Yeah. There's two other screws, uh -huh. one here and one there, that go into uh, another frame inside for doing the adjusting. So the only thing that's really holding it in is that little lip right there and that thing, and there's no... Which on all the ones that came to America didn't have that. No, you had to take the ring off to do the adjusters. Yeah. <laughs> so it's weird. Yeah, it was just, it was a little different. It was just oddball stuff. Anyway, you got to figure it out. Good. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, I, it's... it's a little bit of engineering to get it in there, but uh, that's it. Yeah, I've done a little, a, a little few other odds and ends to replace the shop. More air traffic. I like flight. Delivering kidneys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kidneys. Are but, uh, anyway, I just 
in the neighborhood, thought I'd stop by and excellent. Say hello. Well, thanks for coming. Let you look and see him like, you know, where's Waldo? Yeah, I know the things are popping. Yeah, That's know. odd. Pop ribbed in here. Yeah, yeah, it's odd. I just never seen one done like that. I don't know. These, I think these actually came with a smaller uh, 68 had a smaller uh, nose. Yeah, animal. they did. And that, that's one off of a split window, I think. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you're right. But, you know, it was already on there. And if you take it off, then you got you know, five. It's color matched. Yeah. Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, leave it alone. Nope. Mine. 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 Well, I gotta step out of the sun before I fry. All right, man. This time well, of day, you don't catch me in the driveway. I gotta. I gotta I'm working on a go kart in the back. I decided right. to put the carbs back on now, as opposed to putting it in when it's in the car. I think I might have a little bit of an issue reaching for the um, bolts, especially on the left-hand side over here, because the oil cooler's gonna be dramatically in the way. Uh oh, our bushing fell out. Yeah, where did it go? Where is that supposed to go? Put the bushing back in here. Everything looks like it's gonna fit just fine. I don't think we're missing anything here. Everything looks good. So let's go ahead and pull the towel. Plugging our intakes. I don't need any of that. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I was once a young person working on Volkswagens and was a little forgetful and would forget stuff sometimes. <laughs> right. That man was once a wee lad. Wee laddie. Eh. Yeah, some of those 13 millimeter nuts I have a little hole here and I threw them in oh. one of our bogus exhaust gaskets yeah. and I pulled the exhaust off that's how it came off I didn't even pull that off it's one of the junk ones we don't need and yeah in here are our 13 millimeter nuts boom two of them Three of them, we need a total of four. Here they are. All right, we can bolt that sucker back down. There should be some washers on it, but we were short some washers on a lot of this stuff. I'll probably have to dig in my washer bin and replace a couple of them, which I'm not opposed to. I'd rather have them than not. It stops the uh, nuts from chewing up the uh, object that you're bolting down. Looks like I actually might have enough washers here. Yeah, I'll dig out one more. Actually. Now this is something that I would not have been able to do had I have put the carburetors on. How did I do this? Had I put the carburetors on last from in the car, this would not have been enough clearance to get anything done properly here. And actually, working down the spec. <laughs> Typically, you can't. You can here. There we go. Look at that. Oh, and the other side's already done. Fantastic. There's our carburetors reinstalled. I gotta go through those vacuum lines and fix things. The balance tube clearly was supposed to have a T in it, which was supposed to connect to the transmission uh, vacuum line and not to the vacuum port on the side, which was for advancing your distributor. We got the wrong kind of distributor in here anyway. We'll get to that in a second also, but uh, you know, that we're gonna save until we get the engine in the car, actually. But anyway, some of the vacuum lines on here are wrong. We're gonna fix them, and well, that's where we're at. But we're just about ready to start putting this engine back in this car. Yes, sir. We're getting there. So I might just start slipping it under the rear apron, start getting the uh, electrical hooked up to the starter. Because remember, that came out last. I actually dropped the engine down because it made it really easy to reach. 
and uh, well, we're about to begin our engine transmission reassembly into this car which might fall into the next video I guess we'll see I'm just gonna go around this thing just make sure every single screw in it is tight and I'm not missing anything the vent tubes on the side here I still need to plug so I gotta go to the hardware store and get some plumbing caps for that as I was saying, these the guys, situated. you see they have scallops cut into them here that has to conform with the shape of the intake manifold. It goes down behind the carburetor just like that. And then there's a cheese head screw hole on either side. And yes, as I said, you do need to have these. So if you have a Type 3, make sure they are there. Mine was missing them. And that was a bad thing. Okay, there they are. Somebody's gonna hate on my screwdriver. Dark man, you should use a, a bigger tip screwdriver. This one's the same width as a cheese head, and they still think I need to use a bigger tip. I don't know. Everybody's always telling me something. You know how it goes. <laughs> there it is. Good on that Another side. Another little tin same that goes other. underneath the intake manifold in there. This is Type 3 specific only, but if you had a set of dual carburetors, I've noticed that they don't really want to fit in there correctly. So. They're usually absent, and on Ruby it was also. But there's a little possibility for some air to escape up underneath here. But the hole is kind of small, and by the time the air gets to this side anyway, it's long since been vented, so I wouldn't worry too much about that piece of tin. But for any of you that, that know that that tin does exist, yeah, it should be there. But like I said, in the case of these dual manifolds, sometimes it just it doesn't fit right, so people just leave it out. And the manifold seems to cover the hole pretty good, so... All the hot air is on this side. It's not really over here. All right, we're gonna wrap this one up for today because I think we're at an excellent stopping point. I think I've got everything assembled that needs to be assembled before we slide that engine back onto the vehicle and start getting this thing reinstalled. So that'll be the next, next video. So anyways, as always, you guys, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. You're missing something if you haven't been there because guess what? I've got almost 90,000 subscribers on this channel, but my other channel has only 20,000. So a lot of you are missing a lot of the other things that I do, so check it out. Also, check out Mad Styles, guys. He's a YouTuber also. Links down below in the video description. I think he's the first one that sent me any merch that I've ever had from any YouTuber ever, and I'm really appreciative of it. He's also a Florida YouTuber, so hey, say hi to Florida, man. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Right. We'll see you guys. I went and shoved everything in there real quick. That's right, the engine is ready to get lifted up and put into place and get the bolts put back into it. However, there are a few things that I missed. I did notice uh, some hose clamps on the exhaust that I didn't finish putting on there, and I'll have to retorque the uh, engine oil strainer plate. Of course, i got to reconnect the wiring that's down there and a few other things, too. But that's all wonderful stuff we're going to save for the next video, guys. So for those of you that already commented on it, yeah... You wasted your comment. <laughs> Thanks anyway, though. I really do appreciate it. Everyone that supports me, as always, I really appreciate you. Thank you, and uh, yeah, that's it for now. We'll see you on the next go-around. Getting this thing handled. Everything here is uh, covered in... Is that rat shit? No. Looks like it's tar or something. That's something new. I've noticed that before. Some kind of tarry looking undercoat or stuff. I thought it was turds. Anyway, it all picked off. Alright, it's gone now. <laughs> but we're gonna adjust the valves on this. Here comes Miss Boom Ass again. Look at her ass speaker all booming out loud. There she goes. <laughs> Got